2 Kings chapter 15 In the twenty-seventh year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, Azariah the son of Amaziah, king of Judah, began to reign. He was sixteen years old when he began to reign, and he reigned fifty-two years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jechaliah of Jerusalem, and he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah had done. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away. The people still sacrificed and made offerings on the high places. And the Lord touched the king, so that he was a leper to the day of his death, and he lived in a separate house. And Jotham, the king's son, was over the household, governing the people of the land. Now the rest of the acts of Azariah and all he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And Azariah slept with his fathers, and they buried him with his fathers in the city of David. And Jotham his son reigned in his place. In the thirty-eighth year of Azariah king of Judah, Zechariah the son of Jeroboam reigned over Israel and Samaria six months, and he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, as his fathers had done. He did not depart from the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, which he made Israel to sin. Shalom, the son of Jabesh, conspired against him and struck him down at Iblim, and put him to death and reigned in his place. Now the rest of the deeds of Zechariah, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. This was the promise of the Lord that he gave to Jehu. Your sons shall sit on the throne of Israel to the fourth generation. And so it came to pass. Shalom, the son of Jabesh, began to reign in the thirty-ninth year of Uzziah, king of Judah, and he reigned one month in Samaria. Then Menahem, son of Gadi, went from Tirzah up to Samaria. He attacked Shalom, son of Jabesh, in Samaria, assassinated him, and succeeded him as king. The other events of Shalom's reign and the conspiracy he led are written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel. At that time, Menahem, starting out from Tirzah, attacked Tifshah and everyone in the city and its vicinity, because they refused to open their gates. He sacked Tifshah and ripped open all the pregnant women. In the thirty-ninth year of Azariah king of Judah, Menahem son of Gadi became king of Israel, and he reigned in Samaria ten years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord. During his entire reign, he did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he caused Israel to commit. Then Pol, king of Assyria, invaded the land, and Menahem gave him a thousand talents of silver to gain his support and strengthen his own hold on the kingdom. Menahem exacted this money from Israel. Every wealthy person had to contribute fifty shekels of silver to be given to the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria withdrew and stayed in the land no longer. As for the other events of Menahem's reign and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? Menahem rested with his ancestors, and Pekahiah his son succeeded him as king. In the fiftieth year of Azariah king of Judah, Pekahiah son of Menahem became king of Israel in Samaria, and he reigned two years. Pekahiah did evil in the eyes of the Lord. He did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he caused Israel to commit. One of his chief officers, Pekah, son of Ramalia, conspired against him. Taking fifty men of Gilead with him, he assassinated Pekahiah, along with Argob and Arya, in the citadel of the royal palace at Samaria. So Pekah killed Pekahiah and succeeded him as king. Now as for the rest of the acts of Pekahiah and everything that he did, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. In the fifty-second year of Azariah king of Judah, Pekah the son of Ramalia became king over Israel and Samaria and he reigned for twenty years. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. 
he did not desist from the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, into which he misled Israel. In the days of Pekah, king of Israel, Tiglath-Pileser, the king of Assyria, came and took Ejon, abel beth Genoa, Kadesh, Hazor, Gilead, and Galilee, all the land of Naphtali, and he led their populations into exile to Assyria. And Hoshea, the son of Elah, formed a conspiracy against Pekah, the son of Ramalia, and struck him and put him to death, and he became king in his place, in the twentieth year of Jotham, the son of Uzziah. Now as for the rest of the acts of Pekah, and all that he did, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. In the second year of Pekah, son of Ramalia, king of Israel, Jotham the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, became king. He was twenty-five years old when he became king, and he reigned for sixteen years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord. He acted in accordance with everything that his father Uzziah had done. Only the high places were not eliminated. The people still sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. He built the upper gate of the house of the Lord. Now as for the rest of the acts of Jotham, which he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? In those days, the Lord began to send Rezin, the king of Aram, and Pekah, the son of Ramalia, against Judah. And Jotham lay down with his fathers, and he was buried with his fathers in the city of his father David, and his son Ahaz became king in his place. Chapter 16 In the seventeenth year of Pekah, son of Ramalia, Ahaz the son of Jotham, king of Judah, became king. Ahaz was twenty years old when he became king, and he reigned for sixteen years in Jerusalem, and he did not do what was right in the sight of the Lord, as his father David had done. But he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, and he even made his son pass through the fire, in accordance with the abominations of the nations whom the Lord had driven out before the sons of Israel. And he sacrificed and burned incense on the high places, on the hills, and under every green tree. Then Rezin, the king of Aram, and Pekah the son of Ramalia, king of Israel, went up to Jerusalem for war, and they besieged Ahaz, but were not capable of fighting him. At that time, Rezin king of Aram restored Eloth to Aram, and drove the Judeans away from Eloth, and the Aramaeans came to Eloth and have lived there to this day. So Ahaz sent messengers to diglath pileser king of Assyria, saying, I am your servant and your son. Come up and save me from the hand of the king of Aram, and from the hand of the king of Israel, who are rising up against me. And Ahaz took the silver and gold that was found in the house of the Lord, and in the treasuries of the king's house, and sent a gift to the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria listened to him, and the king of Assyria went up against Damascus and captured it, and led the people of it into exile to Kerr, and put Rezin to death. Now King Ahaz went to Damascus to meet tiglath pileser king of Assyria. And he saw the altar which was at Damascus. And King Ahaz sent to Uriah the priest the pattern of the altar and its model, according to all its workmanship. So Uriah the priest built an altar, according to everything that King Ahaz had sent from Damascus. In that way Uriah the priest made it, before the coming of the King Ahaz from Damascus. And when the king came from Damascus, the king saw the altar. Then the king approached the altar and went up to it, and burned his burnt offering and his meal offering, and poured out his drink offering, and sprinkled the blood of his peace offerings on the altar. And the bronze altar, which was before the Lord, he brought from the front of the house, from between his altar and the house of the Lord, and he put it on the north side of his altar. He told Uriah the priest, Use the new altar for the morning sacrifices of burnt offering, 
the evening grain offering, the king's, the king's burnt offering and grain offering, and the burnt offerings of all the people, as well as their grain offerings and liquid offerings. Sprinkle the blood from all the burnt offerings and sacrifices on the new altar. The bronze altar will be for my personal use only. Uriah the priest did just as King Ahaz commanded him. Then the king removed the side panels and basins from the portable water carts. He also removed the great bronze basin called the sea from the backs of the bronze oxen and placed it on the stone pavement. In deference to the king of Assyria, he also removed the canopy that had been constructed inside the palace for use on the Sabbath day, as well as the king's outer entrance to the temple of the Lord. The rest of the events in Ahaz's reign, and everything he did, are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. When Ahaz died, he was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. Then his son Hezekiah became the next king.